In the male-dominated world of hip-hop, female MCs have always had to fight for their place at the table. However, ever since she showed up on the scene in the 90s, Jean Grey has been an inspiration for men and women behind the mic. I'm joined right now by the queen of the underground, the one, the only, the conscious femme C, Jean, <laughs> Jean Grey. <laughs> I called you a FMC and a conscious artist. I, I did that because you it's... You call me names. Yeah, I know. Because I know that those are two terms that tick you off all the time. Right. Why? Um, FMC isn't a word. And, it's a and, female MC. I mean, if you're going to use Bansy, hmm. you know, uh, just the fact that uh, it has to be so specific um, just because it's a female rapping. And, you know, I make jokes about it all the time on Twitter and uh, stuff like, you know, who are your favorite female brain surgeons? You know, you don't separate those things. Right. Um, and, and for me, I, as much as I worked, I never looked at it like that. One, one of the things that's interesting is the idea of femc and conscious and all stuff partly comes because people are surprised that women can rap. I mean, even today in 2013. I'm, it's surprising. But part of it. Tie our shoes. <laughs> Um, go to the supermarket by ourselves. Yeah, but I, I hear you. I, and I know some of it is just sexism, right? But then there's also the piece that a lot of women hip-hop artists, female hip-hop artists, don't write their own raps. A lot of male artists don't write their own raps either. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, you came on today was to talk yeah. about sort of what it means for artists to now take much more control over their careers and to have much more of their hand in the pie as opposed to these big labels. Yes. Um, I th and, and things have definitely changed. Um, you know, if we're looking at the fact that uh, Macklemore is, is number one on the charts right now as an, as an unsigned artist, which is crazy. Um, and, and I think a lot of us come from the school of the 90s uh, hip hop, which was we were doing it ourselves. Yeah. You know, we um, started our own record labels and went to go press up our own records. I came from a, a family of musicians, and when I was young and in, in, in a being pushed in a stroller, my mom was taking me to Europa Disc to press up her records and making press kits. Right, because your mom is, I mean, a, a South African star. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I was sort of raised with the idea of learn how to do everything um, so you don't have to wait for people and learn how to do it yourself. Do you ever get to a point where you're like, you know what, man, let me just go back to the big labels. I know, like, I've, I've published books independently and I've published books with big publishing houses. Right. I love doing the independent thing. I love supporting it. But then there's that day where your check doesn't come. Then there's that day where <laughs> there's no, you know what I mean, where the yeah. marketing budget isn't there. There's that day where your books aren't in the store. And you're like, you know what? At least when I was with the other label, you know uh -huh. what I mean? At least I knew where the stuff would be. Do you ever get that I, frustration? I don't know. It, it, uh, you know, that kind of feels like an abusive relationship <laughs> with, with, like, a really rich dude. Like, no, it's, it's, it's kind of not worth it. 